Oh wow, this is just funny. You're still wearing the ring? Ha! Huh. You still have lingering affection towards him? It was probably the best sarcasm Evelyn could say to me right now. Oh yeah, this ring is the wedding ring I have with my current husband right now. Huh? <laughs> we were classmates in college. And my current husband is a lawyer. Evelyn's face contorts. Hey, Evelyn, did you know this? That men love smart women. And for men, young women like you are there just so that they could play with fire. My name is Sandra. I have been married to my husband, Devin, and it has been half a year since we got married. He was a colleague of mine at work and we also got into the company at the same time. Each of us have been working hard and contributing to the company on our own. And we got married. But since we were in different departments, we were not specifically ordered to be transferred and we left home together and commuted to work every day together. My husband is, to put it nicely, a very serious person. But if I say it negatively, he could be very delusional. I got married to him with the understanding of Devin's strength and weaknesses. Although he could be like that, if you talk to him and explain to him about it, he tends to be understanding. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. I naively thought that since he would listen to me, there would be no problem if I married him. But after getting married, I realized that there was a part of him that I overlooked. When I came home from work, my husband would always ask me what happened at work. How was work today? Uh, here we go again, is what I think to myself. Oh, it's normal. Nothing unusual. Same old, you know. It has become a routine for me to answer it that way. Normal? Every day is never exactly the same, is it? Just like the seasons change from day to day, right? Even today, something different must have happened compared to yesterday. If I'm being honest, this conversation itself is really annoying and difficult for me to get through. It's easy to talk about things in the department. My husband is right, many things happen every day. But I can see that if I talk about it, it will be even more bothersome. It's gonna be a long chat, and it's not like we can find a good solution or anything like that. I come home tired from work, but he says, This happened to me today. He can talk for hours on end about trivial things that I could have ended the conversation with. I see. That's life, I guess. I can't seem to just enjoy the conversation with my husband. Today, a new request for approval was made in the planning department. And like this, he gets information really quickly. If he knew from the beginning, what's the point of asking me about it? Oh, that. Yeah. It was you who requested that approval, wasn't it? Yes, so you knew it, didn't you? Of course! I will always have information about what's going on in the company. Especially if it's related to you, Sandra. Oh, is that so? So, about that proposal... Here it is. This is what I don't like. Maybe you should have asked me for some advice. Uh, you know, I told you before that I can't consult about it with you, right? Yes, but it's one of the company's most important projects, right? Shouldn't we take in the opinions of as many people as possible? I think my husband is right. However, I am not going to listen to my husband's opinion, because my husband is supposed to include his opinion in the proposal beforehand. It's not just a matter of frequency. It's a matter of how he thinks that what I say is right is the problem here. Each time this happens, I admonish him. If I explain it to him, he finally understands, but honestly, this is getting really difficult for me. Just a few years ago, he never used to tell me how to do my job. Since we got married, my husband was always trying to do his best to proceed forward. I thought he was a very dependable person, but he's not good at the house chores at all. 
My husband had lived at home before we were married, and all of the housework was new to him. He tried to be properly proactive and do the housework, but this made me do the house chores even more. He could not cook, but one day he put a lot of energy into cooking dinner for me. I am very grateful that he made it. I could taste that he put all his effort in making it. Thank you for cooking dinner for me today. Yeah, but it doesn't taste that good, right? I wondered for a moment what I should say to that. Oh no, don't say that. There is a gray stew in front of me. Burnt bits are floating and it is very thick. What did you put in for the ingredients? Huh? Oh, you don't know? Of course I wouldn't know. Because there's a gray slime in front of me, and I cannot see the shape of the ingredients at all. It just looks like a liquid food that you eat when you're on diet. It's mushroom stew. I put beans and mushrooms. So I guess it's more like beans and mushroom stew. It's my original recipe. I see. The gray stew was very crunchy too for some reason. Did you cut off the stems for the mushrooms? What's that? They are not inedible, but I usually cut off the stems from the mushrooms. And now my husband is in a bad mood by this comment. My husband is the type who would always try to show off how he would do this and that. But when he was in the position where people would give advice to him, it seems like he can't take that very well. I made dinner, Sandra, so please clean up afterwards. My husband said that and went into his room. Normally, I would have felt bad at my husband being in a bad mood, but I was relieved at that moment. All I could think of was that I would not have to finish this bad stew. I took my plate to the kitchen and was really surprised. There was a huge amount of gray stew in the pot. The sink was a mess. My husband, who was cooking for the first time, couldn't seem to cook a meal while cleaning up. I sighed deeply and finished cleaning up the kitchen. I put the stew in the fridge, but Devon never touched it after that. It must have not tasted that great, huh? After that, my husband managed to cook, but his skill did not improve at all, as he does not like other people's advice. And as usual, the kitchen was dirty. I got fed up with this and began to actively cook meals. Then my husband said he would be in charge of doing the laundry. He's trying to find his own role in the house chores. I really appreciated his thoughtfulness and I was grateful for how he behaved towards house chores. But even with the laundry, he would screw it up. Whoa! What's wrong? He shouted loudly as he took the clothes out of the washing machine to hang them up to dry. What the heck is this? Oh yeah, you left a tissue in your pocket, didn't you? Oh, well, I could just clean and pick them up later, right? He never apologizes. I'll start it over. You don't have to. I'm fine with it. But I don't like it. Oh, well, then just redo yours. I'll just hang them out to dry. There will be dry tissues all over the balcony if he does that. Who does he think is going to clean the balcony then? Sure enough, dry tissues were everywhere around the balcony. But my husband didn't seem to pay any attention to that. He did not even try to listen to my advice this time too. And after that, he continued to do house chores a lot, but still forgot to take the tissues out of his pockets. When he moves around, my workload increases. I can't seem to help him since he won't even try to listen to my advice. Like this, I became stressed out, and before I knew it, I started doing all the house chores. But my husband seemed to think that I wasn't relying on him much. I think he wants me to depend on him. But I don't know how I can depend on him. As these days continued, our conversations decreased. And after six months of marriage, I felt that we were in a bad situation. I just get tired of him whenever he opens his mouth. I was at a loss on what to do. Then one of my colleagues told me something about Devon. 
I was not shocked when I heard the story, but rather I felt somewhat liberated. And soon after, my husband told me about it. I need to talk to you. What is it? I want us to break up. Does that mean you want a divorce? Yes, that's right. Can you please tell me the reason, just in case? I want to remarry Evelyn. Oh, so the rumors are true. Yes, I had heard from my colleague that there was a rumor that Evelyn, my immediate subordinate, and my husband were having an affair. Fine, let's get a divorce. Are you sure about that? Fine or not, as long as there's no love here, there's no need for us to be together, right? I knew it. You don't even think about stopping me here, huh? This was my last bet. Huh? I was going to stay if you were going to cry and stop me. But you don't care about me anymore, huh? Can you please not say anything so stupid? Your last bet? This isn't kids' romance. We are married, for God's sake. Be realistic. You're always realistic like that. You changed so much after you got married. <laughs> Look, let's just cut the crap and just give me the divorce papers. Divorce papers, huh? Well, I don't have it. Huh? Oh, I didn't think we'd come to a decision so quickly. Well, you're right. It was all decided very quickly. Well then, get the divorce papers tomorrow. Are you really sure about this? Yeah, it's fine. I'll make sure to request for alimony. There's no shared property, so we don't have to request each other about it. Why? Huh? Why are you so calm about everything that's happening? So you really didn't love me after all, huh? I did love you. I loved you before we got married. But after we got married, I saw parts of you I hadn't seen before, and I got fed up with you, that's for sure. You said I've changed, but you've changed too. Well, I guess our personalities don't really match well with each other. And it's nothing we can do about it. But you're the one who cheated during the marriage, so you'll need to take responsibility for that. I understand. Later, Devin got the divorce papers, but he summoned Evelyn to the house, which I really did not expect. Oh, sorry about everything that's happened, Sandra. The fact that you came to my house, does that mean you were able to prepare the alimony? Yes! I brought the $20,000. Saying that, Evelyn put an envelope on the table. Inside the envelope, there was the $20,000. All right, good. I was able to confirm the amount. And did you transfer the $30,000? Yeah, of course. When I checked it on my phone, I found that the money was also transferred to my account properly. Well then, now that that's done, I have nothing more to say. So can you please leave? You're the one who's leaving though, right? Hmm? Because this house is owned under Devin's name, isn't it? Excuse me? When I look at my husband, he is looking down without making any eye contact. Ah, I get it. There seems to be some kind of misunderstanding. Well, I'm going back to my parents' house for the time being, and the two of you need to have a proper discussion. As I was about to leave the house, Evelyn stopped me. Sandra... Men, you know, like girls who are young and are amazed at anything they do. It looks like you didn't have enough of that cuteness in you. Oh, is that so? Thank you for your advice. Are you frustrated? Pardon me? Devin is pretty handsome too. <laughs> You're right. Evelyn, thank you so much for giving me back my freedom. Please be happy, okay? Evelyn gave me a wry look as I smiled broadly, but I didn't care and headed for my parents' house. Of course, I did not forget to file divorce papers on the way to my parents' house. After the divorce, I commuted from my parents' house to work, but after Evelyn came into my house, I could not find her anywhere at work. Three days later, I was informed that she had resigned. 
it seems like she had gone back to the countryside. I thought to myself, I don't understand what this means, but it's none of my business. I went back to my parents' house and was having dinner when my ex-husband came to visit my parents' house. Oh, what do you want? Are you ready to move out of that house? Let's start over. What? Evelyn was only with me for money after all. Oh, well yeah, most likely. You knew that? Of course! She worked under me and she's been talking about going to blind dates and looking for rich guys. You were probably mistaken for a homeowner and the son of a wealthy family, right? How do you know? You lied about the house being in your name, didn't you? You're so stupid. Since you like to show off, that's why you get deceived by girls like her. That house was given to me by my father. And it is definitely not my ex-husband's house. Hey, let's just start over. No way. Why? Because I'll teach you all kinds of things again. So I'm telling you, that's what I hate. I mean, you're in sales, aren't you? Why are you interfering with my work when I'm in the planning department? And in your case, it's not even an advice. You tell me to make the proposal that you come up with. I really don't like that. It really just bothers me. Anyway, I will never get back with you again. I see. Then give me back the money I've been providing for you. It's like you should be indebted to me. <laughs> what the hell are you even talking about? You've never, ever provided for me. Before we got married, our wedding and during our marriage we split everything you know that I have no concept of making men only pay for me no it's not no if you insist why don't you bring all the receipts with you I hardly depended on you you better get out of that house in a week or I'll hire a lawyer and sue you I slammed the front door behind me after that my ex-husband who had no money moved out of the house he was used to living in, perhaps wanting to avoid causing any problems. And before I knew it, he had left the company as well. According to my in-laws, they don't even know where Devon is. Well, I predict that since the affair between my ex-husband and Evelyn was known throughout the company, he could not continue to stay at the company. I have become the center of attention too, but I have done nothing wrong. As I pushed forward with my work confidently, that incident was no longer a topic of conversation. Then one day, three years later, I saw someone on the street. Oh, it's been a long time, Evelyn. Oh, it had been three years, but she seemed to remember me too. You broke up with that person, didn't you? So, are you still single? It's none of your business. That's true. Handing out flyers in this cold weather is a tough job. Good job for doing it, Evelyn. Oh, wow. This is just funny. You're still wearing the ring? Ha! You still have lingering affection towards him? It was probably the best sarcasm Evelyn could say to me right now. Oh, yeah. This ring is the wedding ring I have with my current husband right now. Huh? <laughs> We were classmates in college, and my current husband is a lawyer. Evelyn's face contorts. Hey, Evelyn, did you know this? That men love smart women. And for men, young women like you are there just so that they could play with fire. Well then, bye! I smiled at Evelyn as she stood there, and I started walking again. That was pretty mean, wasn't it? But I felt like I could take a revenge on everything that was done to me at that time, and I felt totally refreshed and started to move on forward. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. See you in our next video.